All right. How to Terraform Mars with Lasers by... I never know how to say this, but I'm going to just say In a Nutshell. That's what I think the channel name is. In a Nutshell. I, I don't know how to say the first word. I'm not going to try to say it because I don't want to pronounce it wrong. But anyways, how to Terraform Mars. Now, if you don't know what terraforming means, basically, how to make a planet livable for humans. Basically, how to make another planet Earth. Earth 2.0. That's all it is. So, let's go ahead and get into it. You already know what it is. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to Kurz Gazgat. In a nutshell, I tried it. Whatever. Run that intro. Mars is a disappointing hellhole lacking practically everything we need to stay alive. It looks like we'll only ever have small crews spend a miserable time hidden underground. Except we could terraform it into a green new world. But to solve the planet's problems, we first need to make it worse and turn it into oceans of lava with gigantic is lasers. Why is it possible? This like isn't a far-fetched science fiction. Hold on. Oh no, he's tripping right now. Tail. Terraforming I think Mars it, I think is it possible fixes, yeah. on the kind of timescale our ancestors built great monuments in. If humanity solves some of its pressing problems and ventures into space to expand into the solar system, this may not be that far off. Okay, so how do we terraform Mars quickly? Well, well first, it's we gotta get water and air. Air and water. His intro so far to me, I don't know why. Mars is dry and has no soil to grow anything. Yeah. Its atmosphere is too thin to breathe or protect us from radiation, giving you a high risk of cancer. So to turn it into a new home for humanity, we have to give it a proper atmosphere similar to Earth's. It should be made of 21% oxygen, 79% nitrogen and a tiny bit of CO2 at an average temperature of 14 degrees Celsius and under one bar of pressure. We have to create oceans and rivers, and then the ground has to be weathered into fertile soil to host living things. Then we need to install a biosphere on the surface and prevent it all from being undone by installing protective measures that can stand the test of time. It is difficult, but a big laser makes it a lot easier. Challenge 1. The Atmosphere Some 4 billion years ago, Mars had a nice oxygen-rich atmosphere and was home to vast oceans and rivers. It held on to it for several hundred million years before it got blown away. Ultraviolet rays broke Missed down the atmospheric chance. gases and then the oceans until they were swept away by solar wind. Today, Mars is a dry, barren wasteland. Luckily, a sizable portion of the water is frozen in deep reservoirs and in the polar ice caps, enough to create a very shallow ocean. And enormous amounts of oxygen are bound as minerals in the Martian rocks, like the oxygen in the iron oxides that give the planet its rust red color, as well as carbon dioxide in carbonates. To free these gases, we need to reverse the reactions that lock them away by using thermolysis, which occurs at temperatures as high as on the surface of the Sun. In short, we want to melt the surface of Mars. The best way to do that would be to put lasers in orbit, aiming their beams down on Mars. The most powerful laser today is the Eli NP, able to produce beams of 10 petawatts of power for a trillionth of a second. To melt Mars, we need a laser twice as powerful that runs continuously. The easiest way is to use a solar pumped laser that can be powered directly with sunlight. At its core are metal infused glass rods that absorb energy and release it as a laser beam. If we build an array of mirrors in space about 11 times the size of the United States, we can focus enough sunlight onto them to melt Mars. Let's do it! As the lasers hit the surface, about 750 kilograms of oxygen and some carbon dioxide emerge from every cubic meter of rock melted. If That's we are crazy. efficient, our lasers only need to melt through the top 8 meters of the surface to get enough oxygen. It would look terrifying. The skies would be shrouded in storms, while the ground would glow red-hot, crisscrossed by currents of lava. Tireless laser beams sweep over the landscape, leaving trails too bright to look at. After they pass, the ground cools quickly. A strange snow falls, the ashes from all the elements that solidify as they cool down, like silicon and iron. Mars is still a cold planet at this point. 
The happy side effect of this inferno is that all the water in the polar ice caps and even deep underground rises into the sky as hot steam, forming clouds that rain down over the entire planet. They would wash out the nastier gases from the atmosphere like chlorine and carry away harmful elements that accumulated on the surface. In the end, they would form shallow oceans, saltier than on Earth. We might need to do an extra cleanup afterwards. It would take about 50 years of continuous lasering to create our oxygen atmosphere. We could use this opportunity to dig deeper in some places to create the basins for salty oceans or rivers years? and spare some landmark features like Olympus Mons and Valles Marineris. We're not done though. The resulting atmosphere is nearly 100% oxygen and only 0.2 bar. It's hard to breathe and very flammable. To make it similar to Earth and a lot safer, we need to add a lot of nitrogen, which Mars is sadly lacking. We have to import it. The ideal source is Titan, a large moon of Saturn, covered in a thick atmosphere that's almost entirely nitrogen. We just have to move 3,000 trillion tons from the outer solar system to Mars. While that's not easy, it is doable. To process that much of Titan's atmosphere, we have to construct giant automated factories on its surface powered by our lasers to suck in the atmosphere and compress it into a liquid. This gets pumped into bullet-shaped tanks, which a mass driver shoots all the way to the red planet, where they explode and mix with the oxygen. We've already been able to send individual missions to Saturn in just a few years. With enough resources, it should be possible to complete the task within two generations. Of course, it would be much more convenient to have nitrogen left over from terraforming Venus on the side. We explained this in detail in another video. So, about a century after the start of the terraforming process, we have a breathable atmosphere that has the right gases. If the liberated CO2 isn't enough to warm it up to temperatures we can stand, we just add some super greenhouse gases. Mars at this point resembles a black marble from all the cooling lava, spotted with growing oceans and red patches where the old surface remains untouched. It's still a wasteland, no better than a desert on Earth. We need to fill it with life. Greenland! Biosphere Installing a biosphere on a new planet is very difficult. Unexpected interactions between species or sudden diseases can destabilize it to the point of collapse. We would probably begin by seeding our young oceans with phytoplankton. Without competition, it would bloom rapidly, filling up the oceans to become the bottom of an aquatic food chain. They can be followed by tiny zooplankton, then by fish, maybe even sharks and whales. If things go well, life in the oceans will thrive. Life on land is hard. I'm just thinking about this. This ain't even gonna happen anywhere. You know how much money all this would cost? <laughs> We might as well just go ahead and say bump it. It's over with. But you know how much money this will cost? Because we already got a. For one, that looked like a jet. You ain't getting no jet to Mars, buddy. That's right. You got to get a rocket over there so we can take this stuff over there. A rocket already costs. Psh, I don't even know. I, I, I couldn't tell you. It is. It is rocket science. I'm just, anyways, huh? I'm, I don't even know why I tried it, bro. I'm not... It is rocket science. That's crazy, man. I... Anyways, man, what up? What was I saying? Oh yeah. It it we 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 are bro, we're already in debt anyways. And then for two, we would have to get all every single country to agree on this. Cause I'm pretty sure, like doing something like this, I feel like we'll start a war. Because then we're going to have to basically do everything we did on Earth again. But except this time, we're making a whole new planet. But I guarantee some countries probably going to feel like, why we got to share that? You know what I'm saying? Like, why why we got to share that? We share this planet. What if I want this planet? Then, boom, it's over with. We in a war. We ain't going to make it, bro. I'm telling you. Otter. We're not Mars gonna make it. Nutrient -filled ground to sink I'm probably into. dead by there, so it ain't my problem. The congealed remains of lava and ash. Verse said a century. We could wait for thousands of years. For he already said he already said sixty years. Finer sands, or try to do it manually. But we want to be quick, and we have a big laser. Turning the beam on and off in rapid succession would cause the ground to quickly heat up and contract, which breaks it into smaller and smaller pieces. Add a bit of water and you get a sort of dark mud. 
Into this mud, we can mix fungi and nitrogen-fixing bacteria. They're able to absorb nitrogen and convert it into nitrate compounds to feed plants. The first plants we want to bring are native to volcanic islands on Earth, since they're perfectly suited to the laser-blasted Martian landscape. Eventually, the enriched mud becomes the foundation for grasslands and forests. In Mars's lower gravity, trees can become very tall very fast. Their roots gather the nutrients they need and then dig deeper to turn more rocks into soil, forming a self-sustaining ecosystem. At this point, we can slowly introduce more plant varieties, insects and animals. Not mosquitoes, though. The new biosphere needs to be maintained to prevent it from falling out of balance. If plants grow too quickly and absorb too much carbon dioxide, the planet cools down too much. If key species die out, we could see populations collapse faster than they could recover. On Earth, other species would move in to fill the void, but our Martian biosphere is not as flexible. It takes hundreds, if not thousands of years before Mars becomes a stable environment. But eventually, the planet will have the potential to sustain large human colonies. With air, water and food available, we can finally call Mars, black, blue and green, our home. A giant volcanic island in space. Will it last, though? Challenge yeah. 3. The long-term <laughs> future. There is a problem we haven't addressed. Mars's core does not produce a magnetic field, so it doesn't have enough protection from solar radiation or cosmic rays. This becomes dangerous for the long-term health of Martian populations. So, as a final step, we need an artificial magnetic field. It doesn't have to be huge like Earth's. It just needs to deflect the solar wind enough so that it doesn't touch Mars. The easiest way is to construct a magnetic umbrella far ahead of Mars that splashes the solar wind to the sides. A big superconducting ring powered by nuclear facilities is all it takes. It would orbit at the Mars-Sun L1 point, keeping it constantly in between the Sun and Mars and protect the new atmosphere. And that's it. Terraforming Mars would take some work, hefty resources and probably a century or ten, but it would be the first time we've lived in a home designed and shaped solely by us and for us. A first step towards our future among the stars. The first step that we can already take down here on Earth is learning more about the physics and biology needed for such a project. To help you with that, we've created a series of lessons to build your fundamental understanding of these topics. Made in collaboration with our friends at Brilliant.org, ah, these lessons give me. you a deeper understanding of the topics from... Got me. Got me with the sponsor. I thought the video was still going. Shout out to that sponsor, man. But we are a sponsor, man. I'm sorry. Hey man, that's gonna be it, man. I still think, man, it ain't gonna happen. Of course, I'm not gonna be allowed to see it. Most likely not. But hey, if it do happen, congratulations to y'all, man. I'm saying y'all even know most of us on the planet ain't gonna live to see it. Cause I, how he talking? It's gonna take thousands of years. I don't know about y'all, but <laughs> we don't live that long. So hey, man, if y'all get to it in the future and y'all see this video, y'all did it. Congrats. How much money did it take, though? What the world looking like now? That's crazy, man. Just to think. In a thousand years. Will we even still have a planet, bro? How we taking care of it? We ain't gonna have no planet in about 15 years. Really, even 20. But hey, man. Y'all already know what to do, man. Make sure y'all go ahead and like, comment. Go outside, man. Take care of the planet. Eat a plant. And subscribe.